If the Comrades Marathon is the ultimate human race, does that make Barry Holland perhaps the ultimate human? Well, he certainly wouldn't say so, but he's definitely closer in the conversation than most of us. The seven-year-old Belito resident recently completed his 48th Comrades Marathon, taking him to the sole title of both most consecutive and most Comrades in history. I'm James Anderson for the North Coast Courier. Stay tuned to hear my conversation with the legendary runner. Thank you very much. Good, so we're here with Barry Holland. Barry, thanks so much for joining us. Um, just to start off, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about, uh, about your run this year um, and what made it particularly difficult in your comrades' history. It was very hard, <laughs> very hard this year. Um, I cramped uh, for the first time in literally decades. I used to suffer from some, some cramp in the old days, but haven't had it for years and years and years. This year it hit me. Um, and yeah, it, it really slowed me down a lot because obviously on the, on the down run and, and at my more advanced age now, you're looking to, to certainly walk all the uphills in the, in the latter part of the race and gain some time back by running down the hills. But I couldn't run down the hills either because um, of cramping. So it became a very, very hard race. First time I've ever been over 11 hours in my, in my previous 40, 47 comrades. Uh, which was a little private record of mine that I didn't want to go over 11, but you know, I came to peace with it out there quite quickly. I can imagine I, so. I'll, I'll take, the, I'll take the, any medal today, mm. any medal. Mm. Yeah. Especially with, I saw you had a bit of blood on your knee, a bit of uh, blood on the elbow. Uh, was there a fall early on as well? Yeah, I fell up in Kloof, um, and that was uh, through the cramp. Uh, my right calf cramped, my foot hit the ground, and down I went. Um, I'm certainly not that stable on my feet anymore. Uh, it looked a lot worse than it was. I had a, a bit of a, a heart issue um, earlier in, in the year mm. in my build-up. Um, I had uh, what they call atrial fibrillation, which is the top chamber of your heart not pumping properly. And, and through that, they, got, they fixed that with that uh, called a cardioversion where they shock your heart, you know. Mm. And, uh, but through that, you have to go on blood thinners. So because I was on blood thinners, I'd fallen in you know, really grazed my knees quite badly, but not cut them. But of course it was pouring blood and it looked quite dramatic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine so, made for a good photo. Yeah, look, yeah. And, and then just casting back a little bit over your, your time in the comrades, obviously to have such a consecutive and consistent output of 48 in a row, like you say, um, I imagine there must have been times when, when injuries or, or medical issues like that have, have perhaps paid into it, or is that just something you've been uh, lucky with and obviously with your training uh, being prepared for? I think, it's, I think it's both in a sense, and I think you've hit on both of them there. I think I am genetically lucky, it's, it's, I'm, I'm biomechanically sound, so I've not picked up major injuries over the years, uh, because I think I'm just basically quite sound biomechanically. Um, but the other side of that coin, and you touched on it now, is I think being a clever runner, and I've always considered myself a clever runner. So for example, after this comrades now, I don't put my foot on the road for another six weeks minimum six weeks and more likely two months because in that time you've got to allow your body to heal you know when you finish comrades and especially on the down run mm. um, there's literally millions of microscopic muscle tears in your legs and, and those have to heal if you go back and run you know before you should um, then your legs won't recover properly and I've done that my entire career and I think that's been a massive uh, factor in allowing me to get back on the road and then run another year without any kind of major injuries. You know. mm. And in terms of preparation after doing this many, how much of it is momentum and muscle memory and, and sort of the distance built up into the legs? Do you still have to run X amount of miles before you get to the comrades? Or is that number dropping now that you've done so many? No, you, you have to do the training. There's, no, there's just no other way around it. You don't go into comrades without training for it. My training has dropped dramatically from my earlier racing years when I was racing comrades. And now, you know, I just, I could not, my body wouldn't be able to put up with that workload, uh, that training load now. Sure. Um, you know, in my sort of, call it heyday if you like, uh, I was running, you know, 2000 Ks in training from, in five months, from January through to, to the end of May. Uh, now I'll do half of that. So, so training load totally different, but you can't go in with no training. That's impossible, sure. you know. And uh, muscle memory, I, th I think the muscle's the one between the ears. That's, 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 the, that's the strong one, that's the memory side. Um, there's no real muscle memory in your legs, you have to do the work. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And then just taking us back to your first comrades, um, are you originally from Durban? Or, uh, you know, I, obviously counting back the years, I imagine you were 20 or 21 when you... 20, yeah. 20 yep. when you did your first one. Yep. Were you a sportsman growing up? Uh, was, was running always your passion? Or was that something you started on and then it just became a rolling ball after that? I've always loved sport and I've always been involved in sport. Uh, never particularly good sportsman. Um, I think many people would disagree. <laughs> yeah, 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 but in terms of ball sports. Sure. I love ball sports, but I could, I could play them, but I, I've only got one eye. 
So, so effectively, any kind of moving ball sport was always a massive challenge, you know, mm. because your, your brain is only catching up when other people's eyes have seen the ball, you're still looking for it type of thing. So, so uh, loved it, but was, had no great uh, aptitude for it. Uh, and, but yeah, I'm a Durban boy, born and bred in Durban North, uh, went to what was then the old Northlands. Uh, it came combined later with a, a big school down the road called Beechwood and became Northwood. Mm. That's the school known as Northwood now, Absolutely. but we were Northlands before. So I was a Northlands boy, but I've always felt that running was in, in your DNA. If you're a Durban boy, a running comrades was in your day, DNA. You're, you, you, that's that wider men climb mountains type of scenario. Mm. Comrades is there. I think you're going to go and do it, and and I, that's when I set my mind to to actually do to become part of that comrades thing, and and then I chose found that I had some aptitude for long distance running. I was obviously given some talent. I chose my parents reasonably well. You've got to choose your parents. Well. <laughs> Always helps, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder now that you've done so many, do you have a a particular choice of what you like? Do you prefer the down? Do you prefer the up? Is there one perhaps that sticks out in your mind as as your favourite, whether it was your best time or or for some other reason? Okay, so, so again, a double, a double answer to that question. It's interesting because um, when I was racing comrades, I used to hate the down, absolutely with a passion because it just meant so much pain. Mm. Because the second, you know, from, if you look at the profile of comrades, from, from Hillcrest down to Durban is a solid net, net down all the, there are some ups, but it's net down all the time. And that just, the pain in your legs when you're racing hard and, you know, I'm talking about the days when I'm running, well under five minutes a K and thrashing yourself down those hills. So I hated the down and I loved the up because I was always strong on the hills, I could get up the hills, so the up run was better for me physically. Now that I've got so much older and I'm now just kind of surviving comrades as opposed to racing it, uh, it's easier to get down a hill than up a hill. So now for me nowadays, getting on the down run is easier, except as we said for this last now, this last, this comrades now, when I was cramping so badly, um, yeah, it was hard getting down the hills as well. So, but, I can imagine so. <laughs> but I do prefer the down nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how that changes. Yeah. Um, and then looking forward, obviously this year was the first time that you became the sole record holder. Yeah. I understand that your co-record holder for the past 47 years, Louis Massain, wasn't able to do it. Yeah. What does that mean to you to have the sole record? And, and looking forward to 50, what does that mean in, in terms of something that you have as a personal goal, as a personal achievement? Look, I'm extremely proud. Um, I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm very sorry for Louis, uh, and I phoned him immediately, I heard. Uh, I, phoned, I know him obviously very well. And I phoned him straight away, and he was very hot, so, and, I, and I understood that. I mean, I, all I thought was, uh, what was it, what, how would I be feeling if the boot was on the other foot? And, and yeah, we, we would all, we, and I say it's a collective we, we, my family, my running mates, Belito, um, it's our record in a sense. You know, yes, it's mine, and, 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 but it belongs to the running club and the family, and it belongs to, to, to Belito. I'm a, I'm a resident of Belito now, so, so uh, you know, yes, I feel great pride in owning it. It's nice to own it by yourself. Um, uh, have two of you having it, a little bit like if you think about what it must be like to come dead heat in a race. Uh, did you win? Yes, you won, but the other guy won as well. So, you know, there's always that confusion in, in your mind. So to have it clear cut now and to be the record holder is fantastic. And, and I, I think there's a great excitement building now and a great story building as we go towards the 50. Uh, because the 49 next year is going to be that next big stepping stone. Still, obviously, mean, incredibly meaningful, but not the 50, mm. but it's going to be exciting because it's, it's the last step, it's the last, after that, after next year is the final hurdle and the final countdown. So I think that's going to be fabulous and I think when, when I get to 50, not if, when I get to 50, um, it's going to be incredible because uh, it was at one stage I would have thought it was an impossible dream and now it's becoming a, re a dream, it's becoming reality. Mm. Absolutely, and people love round numbers. Yeah, yeah, it makes, indeed. It you? makes a nice number in the history books, for sure. I mean, I, I always think back on, on, you know, my great friend Bruce Fordyce. He won Comrades nine times. And people used to look and say, but why didn't you win it ten times? And I say, but for heaven's sake, guys, the, guy, the man won it nine times. <laughs> four more than any other man in history. But you still want more. You want more blood out of the stone. People love round numbers. You're Absolutely. quite right. You know, if, I, if I finished on 49, people would say it was incredible but not really incredible. Not quite, not, not quite there. <laughs> not <yeah>. quite incredible, <laughs> yes. And then I wonder, Barry, after 50, uh, like you say, when, not if, is that something that you'd like to carry on doing, perhaps go longer, or is, are, you, are you calling no, for no, I'm out, that? I'm out, I'm out. You know, I, look, they're getting incredibly hard now. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that 49 and 50 are nothing like this year. 
um, and I hope I don't have to revisit that cramp story, etc. Um, but I think I'm out. You know, I, you never say never, but to, in my mind, again, it's round numbers. The 50 is fabulous. What's for me in 51? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, somebody's going to come along and break the record. But you know what? I'll still be the first who got there, which will be incredible. Um, yeah, what's the point of putting myself through another year? I'll be, I'll be 72 when I get to 50. Hey, it's enough already. It's, it's, the, it's the pipe and the slippers and the, and the warm fire. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone will begrudge you your time, absolutely. Well, look, Barry, I think on behalf of Belito and certainly in terms of the larger Comrades running community, we look forward to being there with you for 50. Lovely. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been Thank very interesting to Thank chat. you so much indeed. Lovely. Thank you.